It is with me. Hello, Ogajulu Ugbo. How are you? It's been a while. It's not been a while, anything. I've not seen you two days back to back. Yes, because they put my yeah. off together. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I don't make it sound like I disappeared. How are you doing? I'm doing amazing. So, over the weekend, we had the Evolve to become more. Yeah, we heard easier. about that. Yes, it was phenomenal. It was beyond words. I'm just very grateful for the love and the support and for everybody who traveled outside Lagos to come for this program. It just sort of showed like, okay, people are beginning to trust yeah. that there's something there. Value. And uh, I was really grateful. Mm, oh, grateful. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah. Talk about us all about it. Yeah, I'm sure she did. Yeah. <laughs> How are you doing, Nima Akasha Zibiri? I'm um, getting a break from mothering my children this for two days. <laughs> they said, what to them? They'll, be, they'll be at uh, my sister's place, my okay. place for, for two days. So mm. I'm grateful. Thank okay, you. Yeah. Drop them off. I've already shipped them oh, off. They wow. came to pick them. So I'm just going okay. to enjoy myself today. Myself okay. and my husband. Only one started. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Imran is a guru anyway, so we expect that. He does. Mm. Actually, that boy needs an abroad. He needs to get off this mentality of his my last In the house. How are you doing, Tokwe? I'm good. Grateful school for life. Um, and I'm enjoying daily meditation. Ah, ah nice. Yeah. <laughs> so, do you actually have time for the meditation? Huh? Do you actually have the time? Yeah, I do 10 minutes. Mm, that's good. Uh, I do 10 minutes. I found some one vi YouTube video online that I could do 10 minutes. Last night, before going to bed, I did 30 minutes. That's before awesome. Sleep, so, um, I'm happy for I'm, you. I'm, I'm enjoying it. Yes. I mean, I'm I'm enjoy, you. I, you know, like I did it before and then I just got, you know, the way you just feel like... It's so hard to concentrate the way. Yeah. Meditation. It's so hard yes. to concentrate. Yes. So I'm, I'm learning that it's okay. It's okay. When my drift, I'll come yeah. back to where it's meant to be. But I'm enjoying that, that clear, clarity of... And so, sometimes I feel like yesterday I was so running around, feeling like I'm running late. I just said, take a deep breath. So I... Breathing, 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 breathing out. Before you knew it, and then calm. I was calm. So okay. I think it's important to just be in the moment because what we tend to be more uh, anxiety happens when you're trying to mm. worry about what's going to happen in the moment. Yeah. Just focus on now, now. Yeah, I, I like that, you know, because I, I, I tell people I grew up somewhat alone, so I'm, mm. I, I have a lot of quiet moments. Quiet. I mm. love my company, yeah. so I, I think a lot. I have that time where I just sit down mm. and I reflect. So I do a lot of reflection. So maybe, yeah. but, but I, I just clearing your mind. Don't think mind. about. It's, it's, it's interesting. Mm. Good, good, How good, you doing? Good. I like your white shirt. Thank you. I'm trying to do some white, you know, do some stuff. Fashion combo. I don't know, man. I'm just trying to be better than yesterday. I'm just a baby. Day. You day. just have this innocence. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm just taking the day at a time. Yeah, know? and enjoying oh, the day. Uh, today, I actually have lots and lots of meetings today, but um, it's one of those. There's Wednesdays, I think, I think it's like my meeting days, so I'm always so busy on Wednesdays, but it's all good. Hey. Let the money come in. That's the idea. That's the body. That's, <laughs> that's the that's last, last. That's last. Make the money enter. Let's go to break. When we come back, we go through the front pages of the papers. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Okay, we're going to start with the nation. Two officers, six soldiers killed in attack on presidential guards. Varsity strike act fast to avert unrest, Labour tells federal government. APC leaders mourn Kemi Nelson. Worry seeks confirmation of acting general CJN and 17 Rex. 19 Rex. Friend attack victim 100 million era paid for my ransom, for my freedom actually. Hmm. Insecurity food prices could double, farmers warn. An excess crude account down from $35 million dollars to $337,655. Whoa. Officers were killed as opposed to, you know, the initial reports um, by this, um, the brigade spokesman, Captain Godfrey Abakwa, on the attack that happened in Abuja around Buari. He had said no soldier was abducted. They had only three casualties and they were already evacuated. And um, that, you know, only... Um, that no soldier was whisked, whisked away, but two bodies of two, the bodies of two soldiers yeah. were found in the bush and um, they've been named. Let me quickly get their name. Um, sorry, Captain Samuel and Captain uh, <coughs> Lieutenant uh, Jauro. And I think both of them are from Kogi State. So the Kogi State governor also added his voice to this report saying that, you know, two of the finest of his finest um, indigenous in the army were affected by this. 
and the attack around the law school. So the law school has also had their call to bar scheduled and they had to reschedule it to the body of benchers sectariat in Jabi because of the insecurity report. So what I don't like is that, you know, number one, we fail at, um, you know, uh, pre uh, providing security. Number two, we then try to manage the information in a way that it looks, you know, worse than Turkey. Right. You know, okay, these are they, were, they, they are human their beings, lives. yes, right. and they should and be honored. They, their bodies were found, so they were obviously taken away. If mm. if the security was up to par, they would have you know combated and at least tried to rescue them instead yeah. of finding their bodies lying Just in the lying bush. There like you know? that. All right, let's take another story. Yes, yeah, so uh, farmers have alerted the Nigerians to imminent rise in food prices. They are saying that the prices of staple menu like beans, rice, and gari may jump as high as fifty percent uh, from next month. That's August. Now, according to All Farmers Association of Nigeria, they said one of the reasons that they are having this issue is because of the sacking of farmers from their farmland as a result of insecurity and banditry. So farmers are really afraid to get into their farms and, you know, provide food for us. And they went ahead to mention some of the things that have increased. They said um, a 100 kg bag of beans could sell for more than 100,000 naira from August. The bag of brown beans, which sold for 47,000 naira in June last year, was already selling for 82,000 naira. In July, a 50 kg of beans sold for 12,750. But the price went up to 30,000 by January last year and rose to 45,000 six months after. A four liter paint bucket of beans now sells between mm. 25 to 3,000. The yeah. price of 50 kg bag of rice, which sold for between 21,000 to 28,000. Yeah. Uh, 500 is now over 30,000. A sack right. of Gary, 11.5, right. yeah. just like everything is going up. And the government needs to do more <laughs> with insecurity so that farmers can it's go really back. Really I mean, I give my help for money. And yesterday, for the when they come back, I was really angry. Almost an empty bag. So, yesterday, when she got from the market, she came straight to my room to show you, to show me. She was down two, more, more, 500 there. Mm. You know, tell me, we used to do 100, 100 there. Mm. Two, I'm not eating. 250 now, it's 250. Mm. It's crazy. Let's take another story in the yes. nation. So the excess crude oil account, this is supposed to be like this, the last minute resort for hmm. our country when things Remember are bad. Remember was yes. trying to save. When things are bad. Uh, in in Kudu Willa's time, it was sovereign wealth fund. We now created this thing called well, the excess, excess crude grew. Excess crude grew yes, substantially. Yes, yeah. And now we even grew again. We got to 30, the total was 30, um, 35 million um, do, 35 million dollars, over 35 million dollars, 35 million, 300 and um, 77 dollars. But in one month, in the month of May, we withdrew 35 million from this excess crude oil account. And now the excess crude account is down to 376 thousand mm. dollars. We have no buffer for any issue. If, if, we, if there is, if push comes to shove, like this is, this is how you, this is how you know it failed. Um, wh wh when things fail, when you are unable to meet your basic obligation mm. and our, our revenue keeps dropping, mm. what we are earning, I've been saying that every day, I think people don't get it, get it, so that you can know how to hold your leaders accountable. I was going to take, I mean, this, I was going to take the story about the train attack, so I think, I think Mariam actually took that story yesterday, but it was in the papers today again, so one of the uh, um, train, uh, the victims that, were, that was freed recently, mm -hmm. um, his name is Hassan Lawa Uthman, was saying that they had collected 100 million for their freedom. The, the, and said that those who abducted them were members of Boko Haram. Uh, they said that the insurgents were very well armed and they had taken about a huge expanse of land that cut about four states. And they, were, they were, uh, said that it was an amazing experience. Said that even before the flogging, a few days before they were flogging that video that came out, they actually gave them 10,000 naira for their upkeep. They took care of them. Um, and they, they it's were. It's a business. It was, it was, it's a business. They took, I mean, and they. I mean, it was, it was just going on and on about what happened and say that the federal government, their, their grounds with federal government is that federal government is not allowing them to um, practice their religion the way they wanted to. I don't know what that means. I really don't understand. Hey, I don't understand. So, so it's an ideological fight, us. according to him. And um, he said that it was a uh, feeding, feeding wasn't so bad, but at least um, it was just a fight that the federal government hasn't been really totally sincere on fighting this, um, this banditry. Moving on to the punch. I saw plots, massive attacks on Lagos, Akaduna, others. Passengers tackled bribe seeking ocean policemen, law graduate mm -hmm. battered. ASU, labor threatens to shut down economy plan strike. FAC, allocation rises 18%. FG states share um, 802 billion. Muslim Muslim ticket, Tignanbu begins consultations, can't deny his knowledge. 
MFLA House to bar CBN chiefs from politics. No immediate solution to the aviation sector, says, um, says federal government. And subsidy lawmakers to probe Jonathan's administration. Okay, which story are we starting with? Human interest, quickly. So this young lawyer working with the Mayoko Oluwadara's firm, oh, sorry, his name is Mayoko Oluwadara. He's a young 23-year-old law graduate. He was traveling from Ikiru to Lagos in a bus and was accosted by police officers at the checkpoint. And you know the way the usual style, they wanted to search, they picked only him from the bus and asked him to come down mm. for a search. And then the police officer then said to him, can I... He said, why are you picking me to, why are you singling me out, out to, to search me? Is there a, a search, can, you, can I say search warrant is, or an arrest warrant? Why are you picking on me and all of that? And he said, no, you're, you're an internet fraudster, yeah. to which he denied that. He said, I, he disagreed. I said, I'm not one. He then he demanded his phone. He said, you don't, you can't search my phone without a warrant. And the police officer just said, okay, you're proving stubborn. Apparently, the objective is to sort of intimidate him to pay in for himself out, but I was commend the entire bus full of Nigerians who insisted because they were asked to leave and the driver said, I cannot leave a passenger mm, with behind. you. The instruction from the park is to get every passenger to Lagos. Yes. I cannot leave one person for wow. you. And that led to a fracas. They started beating this young man oh with God. their baton. They used everything. They tried to intimidate him. Other passengers then joined in, defended Mm. The young man. Amazing. The police officer brought out his phone saying, I will make a video of you. I will incriminate you with the video. And the young man, in the midst of all that beating, continued to shout out loud that, you know, I've been uh, uh, profiled wrongly. I did not do anything. They're asking me for a bribe. And he, because he was now screaming that into the video, the officer had to delete his own video. Eventually, they let him go. But they're asking for justice. And I hope that the Oshun State, because they... Piero from um, Oshome, our friend of Paola has said that, you know, this has not been reported to her directly. Now she's just hearing it from the papers, but this is something that they must take up within Oshome right. and find out okay. those police officers who think it is okay to, you know, intimidate an innocent Nigerian going around their, busi okay. their businesses. Yes, yeah, so another human interest story said that, um, the identities of two Nigerian men who are, were shot dead on Saturday at the ATL Lounge, Canada had been, you know, discovered. They said uh, Chibwe Zemoma is 22 years old and Tosin Awaro Shegbe is 25 years old. And they were just working as security guards, I think, at the club. Um, some of the um, friends who know them say that they are very young, hardworking men who just, okay. yes, according to them, who just uh, finished their master's. They were just doing that job to, job to yes, me. make ends meet before they get a good job. One is into tech, the other is an engineer. And a fight happened in the club, and there was shooting. And before they realized, the two of them were shot dead. <gasps> and one lady survived, uh, who has been another 25-year-old lady who has been taken to the hospital. The police are still investigating what happened at the clubhouse in, in Canada because they heard the gunshot and they raced down. Before they got there, these two men were lying flat, shot dead. The suspect disappeared. And so the police is calling on witnesses who may have seen what happened to so come for forward for and you know talk about it, <laughs> and also trying to check the surveillance videos to see if they yeah. can at least it's find really, the suspect. It's painful. just painful. But friends have organized a GoFundMe account. They're trying to raise about $50,000 to the family so that they can do the burial. Oh, okay. Let's go on a break. Be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We're still reviewing Punch. Talk about the story. Yes, I was going to take the story of the aviation sector. So we all know the crisis the aviation sector has been facing. We a lot of domestic airlines delay. Many people have um, um, flight cancellation. One airline has already even had their license suspended. But it seems like there's no solution in sight. Um, aero contractors also have temporarily suspended operations. They said there's no immediate help for them because the crisis isn't local. The crisis is a global issue. That's what the federal government declared on Tuesday. 
And they also mentioned that the energy crisis is real, it's global. Today, aviation problem um, is aviation fuel problem is all over the world, from America to New Zealand. It's aggravating in Nigeria because we don't produce the products. That's what makes it worse here. But okay, I was going to say actually major headline. So there were strong indications yesterday, Tuesday, that ISWAP and Boko Haram are planning attacks in the north. Um, the Northwest, North Central, Southern, and specifically Lagos, Kaduna, Kogi, Kassina, and Zamfara states. Um, the spokesman of NSCDC, Shola Odumosu, when he was contacted by Punch, he, he, he failed to say any response because obviously they're trying to be mum. But there was a leaked memo that was, that was quite instructive of the fact that there, is a plan, that there are planned attacks on these various states. Mm -hmm. And they're looking at the um, um, government infrastructures, churches, uh, public places. And they're asking that um, government should beef up security across the and people should be careful because these, the, um, these, perp these perp perpetrators are actually planning to come down south. Um, although the, the first PRO spokesman, Mui Wadijobi, said that Inspector General of Police has ordered the deployment of police personnel assets to strategic parts of the FCT and other places. So this is, these are some difficult times, but we, we, they don't want to send panic across, and so they're asking that people should just stay calm. <laughs> Uh, Darling. Daily Sun, <clears throat> London court to grant Ekwere Madu's wife bill. Husband remains in custody. As to strike labor grounds, Nigeria threatens to stop elections. How terrorists kill two guards, brigade officers, eight soldiers in Abuja. Tension as police defuse bomb in Kogi government office. Insecurity, 44 reports given before Kuje prison attacks his reps. Basanjo task NPC, unaccurate, credible 2023 census. Senate may confirm acting CGN Ariola today. Okay, which story are we taking this on? Kwe Madu, um, the for, um, former deputy Senate president who is facing criminal charges in the UK has been remanded in custody while his wife has finally gotten bail. According to the London court, they said in, the, in fairly stringent conditions she has been granted bail. But new facts coming up says that, yes, the young man on whose supposed to be the victim of human trafficking by the couple was taken to London and he was, gotten to, he was taken to the Royal Free Hospital where he was tested and he was, the test was conducted on his kidney and it was found out that his kidney did not match and then by the time he returned to the family house he started being maltreated according to the new reports in the Sun today he said they changed the treatment dramatically he was being he was they started treating him effectively as a slave and because of that, he escaped and was homeless for three days before he went to the state's police station. I think God will help this couple and in this matter. Me. This one is okay. feeling. The major headline. Okay. So the Nigeria Labour Congress made good their threat yesterday and started the protest, which is supposed to be happening for two days. They were able to start um, as at 6.30 a.m. They gathered workers across the 35 affiliates of the NLC, including non-academic uh, union of Allied and Educational Institution, NASU, Senior Staff Association of Nigerian Universities, SANU, Nigeria Union of Journalists, members of the civil society, students and parents, as well as Trade uh, Union Congress, the TUC. Mm -hmm. And they said they blocked everywhere from the southeast to the north central, south south, and all that. Markets, mm -hmm. uh, schools, schools were closed already before. Mm -hmm. uh, offices, everywhere was closed. And one of the things they're saying is that you, the federal government cannot say it doesn't have money to sort out ASU. The, um, money paid for tickets in different political parties could be used to handle that and they are not going to relent that this is just a, a warning protest after that if nothing is um, is done they will proceed into a warning strike three-day warning strike and after that if nothing is done they will now go full-blown mm. into shutting down the economy that the government needs to do something <coughs> urgently so that these children right. can go back to school okay i was going to take the coaching prison so the house of representatives said that 44 reports were provided by the dss before the Koja prison attack, and, he, and the deputy speaker was presiding over the house yesterday at the, over the plenary. And um, the lawmaker, Abubakar Yilma, was urging the house to halt their plan to ban Okada nationwide. According to him, there are lots of millions of Nigerians who are dependent on this mode of transportation. It's a bit completely unfair to um, do have a total ban. What he was advocating at all was that they can do a total ban on the specific hotspots across the country where we have these bandits in the various states and regions where we have the band. While he was speaking, 
they were to speak I called him to uh, come, 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 come forward. They had a talk to him, trying to tell him to step down. That the House plans to support the executive on this arm. That this is not a time to bring up this objection. But he was saying that it's important for us to look at it again. Mm -hmm. Because having a total ban is, might be counterproductive because there are many people whose daily lives is dependent I on this mode of transportation. I disagree with him. Why the crisis, crisis really is there? Yeah. And I felt, you know, they had an argument. Because one of the, the arguments the, the uh, chairperson for them raised was that they also carry out criminal activities in vehicles. Was, is there a nationwide ban on vehicles? No, but, you know, to ban this because, you know, it's more on, lesser on the... It's, it's almost like an elitist of policy because you can't ban vehicles, but you'd rather ban... You know, but if you look at the ratio of how brother, many crimes we're getting via use. vehicles versus how, how much crime we're getting versus... But if you look at it, and wait, how many of our looking people? for drastic measures. Yes. So this is different. This how is many of our people yes. Yes. are even using it as well, a daily livelihood? Mm. They are strangers, basically. They are not the people we yes. know who were using this as a they're means of... They are not real Nigerians. So they, they have been infiltrated arguments. and the real Nigerians Honestly, have been kicked out of that market. We need to... Yeah. So we yeah. need to look at it. So I'm happy there's a debate ongoing mm. and it's good at all parts. All parties um, share so, their views. Um, so another um, kidnapping incident happened in Kaduna State um, in the KK community of Millennium City of Chikum local government area. People were coming back from work. It was raining heavily Monday evening around 9 p.m. And once again, they said they woke up the next day and realized that probably people didn't even know what happened. They just said that many people did not come back home. People already said, I'm on my way back home. They cannot ascertain the number of people that have been kidnapped. They said the police um, has not confirmed. They said... Um, the, as, as of the final of this report, no official statement from both the Kaduna State Police and the Ministry of Internal Security have, co have confirmed the number of people. It is con confirmed that people have been kidnapped, but we don't know the number of people kidnapped within that 9 p.m. evening of Monday when they realized it was raining and people were just being taken out of their houses. Moving on now, let's see how much time we have left. We don't have much time. Vanguard protests, government toying with uprising like hashtag NSAS NLC. NBA Olani Peku face off body of benches meet silent on Akwata's petition. Um, organ harvesting court regards a great mother's wife bill. Ikiti Tribunal grants Oni's request to inspect electoral materials. Rex not recognized as members of INEX says Okoye. And uh, IMF downgrades Nigeria's 2023 growth projection retains the 2022 at 3.4%. Let's take the NBA. This uh -huh. face off is really, really interesting. interesting. So <laughs> According to this uh, report, uh, the chairman of the MBA, uh, Akwata, um, president of the MBA, sorry, has, had written to the legal, Respectfully written. legal practitioner disciplinary committee to investigate and sanction one Ms. Ogundi, who is w presently working with um, Wali uh, Olani Kweku's firm yeah. as a lawyer. And this petition, of course, because as the will be viewed under the body of bench as where well, Olani Kweku But you guys know what happened? So there's a, give there's us a the bad answer. Story. No, no, ah, let me tell you what happened. Let me give us... She's, yeah. the, the, she's trying to protect her. What? Mm -hmm. You don't take them also. I mean, what happened? <laughs> what happened was that there's a lady in Olani Kweku's law firm. Yes. Okay? She wrote a mail to a client suggesting, actually suggesting that the firm would, um, would, inf would influence the judges. Mm. In, in, oh. um, in, um, for, towards the, I think the client, yes. for a client, for and she said it in a mail. Of Whoa. course, so I think it was like Bakuwa was was the lawyer of the other party. party. And I'm like, well, how dare you say Send that? Send this. Send that kind of mail, and that's how Katakata bust. Whoa! Now the Akakata is now asking. Is well, that to step like, down from step down from the bench ah. before the dis legal disciplinary committee yes. can then probe that uh, action mm. of the lady? Yes. I didn't even have this bad gist. Mm. One thing I was just saying that this is how things are properly done. Mm. If you have an interest in the matter, you can't be a judge. Yes, in the you can And he being a body of bench, he must step down. This mm. lady acted in his face. Wow. Ah, that lady. So that's what she forgot the ethics of ah, the profession. Totally. Not, everybody no, just hustling. I'm they telling you. Unfortunately for her, she's working for such an icon in the The icon has to step down while the See what she's doing. Oh, he has, he has it's to not his fault. He has to step, has to step down. down. But All the respect I have for Olola Nipeko, he has to step down, down because of this. Of ah, That's what they're asking. Yeah. Just ah. temporarily. Oh, temporary. temporary. And TMS, yeah. All, All the years. All the years. All the years of work. This yeah. one is really not about him. I know it's not about him. It's about the lady. Let's go. Let's go on a break. When we come back. What are you having? I have this. I'm an area now. I know. I can get connection in that area. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.
Thanks for staying with us, joining us to talk about Flap Co-op Asset Rice Company, the journey so far and the social economic impact they have made through the Nigerian real estate and agricultural space. He's the president himself, Flap Co-op, and general manager and director, Asset Rice Limited, Mr. Oluarutimi Ojamamuyi. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you. Good My to pleasures. have you. Thank you. So, so when we much. heard of Flap Co-op, we're thinking, what is this about? Because every day we come up with all sorts of names and all sorts of <laughs> projects and these and that. What is Flap Co-op and Arise, um, Asset, Arise, yes. Asset Rise? Great. So thank you, ladies. Um, a pleasure to be here. Um, Flap Co-op is Flexible Luxury and Asset Payment Limited, the acronym for Flap. But okay. as a cooperative, we have to measure to Flap Co-op. Okay. And we're licensed by the Lagos State Ministry of Trade, Commerce and Cooperative to practice cooperative, organizing people to save and to own a site, and whatever means we can practice cooperative. But having been on the journey of cooperative so far, our aim is to actually accelerate our members to own assets as a means of solving poverty. So how I mean is, if you practice the normal banking system, over 80% of savings account holders can access loans because in quotes, they are not viable to access loans. You don't have to go and bring a CEO folder that you don't have mm. or the documents. So we saw how do we elevate poverty from this 80%. Our journey is to bring them up to owning assets like real estate so that they can have CFO, they can have properties. And when they have this, they are eligible for financial stability and can always have access to loans and other facilities. And when we talk about asset rise now, so we saw this journey and we have to also create a real estate company called Asset Rise Limited. In simple meaning, let the asset rise. Mm. And the people become asset owners, they escape from poverty, their landlords, and, and the rest. So I know that you have a project ongoing at Ekbe. Can you tell us about it? Okay, thank you. Um, with Asset Rise and with Flap Co-op, we've been able to focus more on agriculture and real estate. And our project in the agriculture is creating transitional model for real estate. How I mean is, uh, we buy land in developing locations, especially maybe a pair or the developing locations. And possibly you buy because these places will go up in value later. But you leave this land fallow and nothing is done on them and bush grow on it. So what we have done is, when you buy cheap, let's create an economic value out of this land. We'll rent the land from you and we'll plant on it. So in some of our estates, like in Kobakbaya, Belkuta, and uh, City Lane Gardens, and um, Mawea Fada, Crystal City, um, City Ambience, and in Ekpe Visionary Garden City, we have acres of cassava plantation that are owned by, I mean, we, we've partnered with landlords to make this farm happen. The security is, is your land. When the development comes to, close to this area, we simply remove our plants, and I mean, the land will have add, add value over time. So for the landlords, your land is adding value over time, mm. but your land is also giving you passive income. So it's not until you build that house mm -hmm. and you rent it out like it. before mm -hmm. you start earning uh, rental like, income. Yes. By owning a land, you can earn rental income. I'm enjoying this conversation because the objective of owning land those days is to be, to be economically empowered. This yeah. is, we just think that until you buy, build, and then rent houses, yes. there's no other way to own properties. I'm glad that you have this initiative. So break it down. Yeah. For somebody listening, so that they, uh, if, if it's what I'm thinking, yeah. when you farm on the product, on the land economically, this is what you're looking at at the end of the day. These are the opportunities you can use. How does it become an asset? How does farming become an asset? Mm -hmm. Great. So the land is the asset. Mm. We practice farming on your land. Okay. And we pay you rental income. So now we do a 20% rental income to the land owners. And we harvest... We process. 20%. 20, 20, 7, 700, um, 1,000 naira. 700, you'll be getting 20% of that every, every year. year. Every okay. year. Now, so you earn on your land. And when development comes, so we've had this model sustained over time. Uh, one of our recent estates, the city ambience in Mowea Fada, was on this scheme. We just uh, developed that into a residential estate now because there's electricity in that community now with a tarred road. And we have to stop farming for people to start building. So from agriculture, now a residential estate, and people can live in it. So wait, let me be sure. Yes. 
um, so I buy land from you. Yeah. The land I bought for you, you pay me 20% of rent every year. Yes. Farm to, to farm on it. Yeah. Now, when you harvest, do I get a profit from what the harvest? No. Oh, it's yours. It's ours. Yeah, so that's, that's, it's rent. That's, you that's rent. rent. Yeah, oh, so it's 20%. Income. Can't I increase it to 50%? Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to land now. And yes. Can I be farming? Can I be farming? Can I be farming? Can I tell you to farm for me on my yes. behalf? Yes. Yeah. So we've created this project in a different model. Okay. You can farm by yourself and we can farm for you. So we have the, uh, the, the temporary crops like the cassava, the maize, and the rest of them that... You can harvest within three months, one year. Presently in Ekpe, we have over 10,000 ridges of yam. By February, we'll be harvesting our yam and our cassavas. So for these people, if you want to farm, you can come. It's your land. If you are not renting to us, we don't, it's not a must. Yes, you, we're farming. A, a, how would we you, can, so how would your profit come? So it's your land. If you don't rent to us, it's still your land. Okay. It's not a must you rent so to us. So if you farm for me, how would you earn? What so if you're farm, if you're, then we, we, are, we, are managed, we have to sign an MOU to share profits okay. for oh, farming for you. Okay. So, but for this very one now, we have another project, which is the Palm Ridge Estate that I'm going to talk about. Please go ahead. Okay, That's so awesome. the Palm Ridge Estate, what we are doing there, it's cash crops. Mm -hmm. And we all know the value of cash crops, especially the palm tree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The palm tree is an everlasting tree. And I'll share this story with you. Um, as a young boy, I grew up seeing my father having a fleet of cars, and we're going to the best of schools. And then when we were in school, I hardly would tell my friend my father is a farmer, because mm -hmm. then if your father is not an engineer or something, you're not proud of him. Your father is not a worker. Exactly. So one day, my father came to school with Mercedes-Benz 230D, hmm. and none that time, of that is time. in our school then. <laughs> that was a first. So all the students rushed out and see Mercedes-Benz 230D, mm -hmm. And I was so proud to see my father. Oh, but the farmer. The farmer. <laughs> so, but yes, I think the second year after that, he died when I was 14. When we look back, if all we were having as an asset is the Mercedes-Benz 230D, mm -hmm. it would be a foolish thing because by today, it would be in the museum. Mm. But my father left acres of palm trees. Mm. Until today, all the children were sent to school with palm tree farming. Mm. We mill this oil every month. We produce over 100 kegs every month. Today, a, a, a keg of palm oil is more expensive. A 25-liter keg of palm oil is more expensive than a 25-liter keg of, of petrol. Yes. The yes. keg of palm oil in Lagos should be around 25,000 now. In my yes. village, it's 20,000. So we mill oil and we pay all our bills. Mm. And that land has appreciated in value also. Yes. Yeah. Today, we are sitting on an asset over 100 acres, and we have palm trees on it. Mm. So what we have done in this with... Uh, during COVID, I have to go to the October Oil Palm PLC. We have over 10,000 acres that were planted by the colonial master then, but abandoned and mm. in all Nigeria. So we rented over 130 acres. We set up a mill, and we asked to create a community of farmers also. We rented out for 300 of them, spoke with our bank, created a account for them, and we started <coughs> this journey. So we had a mill, we had a farm, and with our real estate practice, we have to bring this to Lagos. Mm. And we identify a place like Ekbe. We did our soil test. The soil can accommodate palm tree. Right. And we started planting. Right now, for those who are subscribing to the palm, oil, palm tree farming, when you buy the land, we will plant for you. You own the land. You own the palm trees. Mm. You have the right to either rent it to us because you don't have time. So people right. like Murayo can leave the studio and come mm. to the farm. Exactly. <laughs> so you can either employ a farm manager to mill your oil for you because we're going to have a central meal. We are creating a, a community of palm tree farmers, a 300 acres. Wow. And mm, that's going to be the biggest in Lagos Massive. to say. Wow. Wow. And wow. we can meal this oil together and supply. We all know the value of oil. I'm interested. Mm, I am. Market. Sounds interesting. I am. Yeah. 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 So, um, I know that when it comes to <clears throat> agricultural um, plan, uh, agric in Nigeria, there are a few challenges. There are vo volatility of your investment. People say um, rain fall, rain no fall can just change. They can change it the for dynamics, that business, you yeah. know. Yeah. Everything can just go, anything can go wrong. So what is the level of security for the assets? And I also know that with palm, you don't get anything in the first few years. So is it that when you do the palm rich process, would they be getting any money in the first three years or there'll be nothing coming to them in that first three years? Thank you. So the very special of palm tree we are planting is the Tenera braid. And Right now, with NIFO, that's the best bread we have in Nigeria. In two years, two and three, and three years, it starts fruiting. Okay. So we tell our people, 
wealth is not a tap of the finger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You grow wealth. Mm -hmm. And, okay, so for those who are doing the cassava thing, they, get they don't want to do palm tree. But when the land stop yielding very good, because we may not be practicing the uh, mechanized farming with all the stuffs, the pantry guy will still be making money for the, for the next 30, 40 years. Mm. Now, the risk involved and the volatility of the, of the weather and every other thing is that we don't plant crops that are easily destroyed by weather. Mm. Take cassava, for example. It can stay anywhere and survive with the sun, with the rain. The pantry also can survive anywhere. And we've understood also that crowdfunding it's not the best model for this. And that's why we've created a security. You own the asset. So you're not giving us your money and we say we'll pay you capital and interest. No. Mm -hmm. The asset is yours. The land is appreciating the value over time and you're making money from your land. And then okay. after 40 years, it can be converted into so your residential real estate. estate. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have to wrap up on you, but how do we reach you? Because this is obviously your segment. Tell them, is there a number? Is there a website? How do we reach you? Okay, so we, we are live... Uh, website www.flapcoop.com as a .ng. Our phone number is on the screen. You can reach you us. I don't see it on the screen. No. Flapcoop.com. <laughs>
in self-development. Yeah. I'm a believer, like most of the... I have spent more money on trainings this year than I've spent on any other thing. Like 80% of my resources this year has gone into self-development and trainings. It is important. And that is what he did. His message itself had no problem. His message was to inspire people that regardless of your gray age, hair, yeah. regardless of your age, you must continue to learn. What he's doing is good. His intentions, good. Timing, terrible. Mm. Terrible timing. That's it. And you mentioned the name of the school. Baddest. <laughs> biggest mistake. Do you know, I, like Google, Google School of um, Kennedy. Kennedy. Harvard School of Kennedy. Mm. No, no, I know it's a school of government. It's an important school. Mm -hmm. But do you know how much, even if they gave him scholarship, mm -hmm. the basic he will still pay, he will still spend over $20,000. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying he spent it from government money because... We've seen his wife years back that she was like, she has her own money when she was wearing that um, um, designer designer. People were brazy the issue that this woman shouldn't look this lavish. You have a right to do it. But here is what I'm going to say. On Monday, we interviewed the ASU um, president. president. And he said something that I think our leaders are not paying attention to. We are mortgaging our future. We are paying the international people for a local problem. Yeah. Leadership in Nigeria, the challenges of growth in Nigeria is a local, local problem. Mm. The American schools cannot teach you how to solve oh, leadership problems problem. in Nigeria. Yeah, true, it is impossible. True, true. So yeah. you cannot learn anything from there that uh, can help you here. Uh, what you need here yeah. is to attend yeah, school, the show. listen to the professors in Nigeria, yes. who understand and have studied leadership here, that finish. will tell you what this is and our what problem. to do. Hey, this is our Kennedy solution. School cannot give you the solution. Let me add to that. Many of those that did masters, I, when I was in class with people who were doing masters degree, had their masters degree abroad. And I was saying that, listen, having your masters in Nigeria is a whole different ballgame. It is. Because like you it. understand the case studies are so Nigerian, it's local, it is relatable, you can understand it. Yes, you will learn techniques abroad, but because it's, you're, you're living here. Mm. So when you do your master's in a school in Nigeria, is it you, what you're learning is more, is, is, is more effective. Not that you can't use what you did learn abroad, but it's more relatable here yeah. than yeah. it works. You it solves your Nigerian here. problem. Mm. And it's more impactful. Go ahead, mm. Nima. Let me hear your thoughts. Because, now let, me, let me make a different angle to Nima. Nima, there, there's an argument. Mm. Let me tell you, this person is, Aye uh, Koko, I can't, can't, can't get his name, said that he has witnessed the Honorable Speaker's intervention at the beginning of ASU strike, he devoted his time and energy to resolving the crisis. As a speaker, he almost acted like an executive, but he has only advice, he can only do his advice. In fact, it was, some have even argued that it was through him that many of many um, ASU delayed strike for many, many, for, for many months. So there are so many things um, Honorable Bajamela has done in the background. Mm -hmm. Should we now, because of this act, negate all the good works he has done concerning the issue of ASU? Okay, so. Yes, I cannot pretend that, you know, we've not seen the Honorable Speaker and his several interventions beyond ASU. Even during the other protests, he comes in, he goes out to treat people. He's a handsome person. So we give him that. But you see this one? He did not do this one way at all. Yeah. And I thank God I did not talk before Tope. <laughs> so that it will not seem like I'm talking everybody's mm -hmm. thoughts. Because that's what is trending. Tope nailed it. Thank you. I hope that our leaders understand that when you study abroad and they did not give you a problem to solve in sociology, you obviously pick societal problems yeah, and you analyze them job. as your project study and all of that. America University, they have enough. But you are coming from a place where you will take your time to suggest. You have to travel in and back. If you were doing it here with a professor from here, even you as somebody of a power can suggest that, on waste management, I saw a small project done by a professor that, you know, was supervising me. I think that the solution is within. Also prof, uh, the actual president was saying, we created UTAS. It's locally created. Somebody within leadership in power did not see anybody within Nigerian universities to create it until they went for IPPIS. They have had Kennedy School. The cheapest amount it will cost is $40,000. It is most insensitive at this time of somebody of the speaker's personality that I have always respected, that, you know, is a very sensitive person to pay that amount of money now and think self-development is ripe now. Why not finish your speakership? I even show us. And, you know, finish your speakership, leave office. No, he needs this for the speakership now. No, he doesn't. He needs the He doesn't. You know, 
you people assume that, or people usually think that acquiring knowledge has to be within the four walls of an institution. You see that person standing by the roadside every day has yeah. a wealth of knowledge that yeah. when you need to know about road, you go and see you that person him. by the roadside. True. If you are getting lost in ocean, do you know who to visit? Mm -hmm. Hey, if you Thank need, you. If you, True. you will Thank go to you. university, but you will not solve ocean the problem. Once exactly. You will see those people in ocean. Yes. They you. will let Stay you know how them. it runs. So you know you can't go to universities over there and think you can solve all our problems mm. here. Imagine that these bandits that are screwing up everywhere. When Obasanjo was screaming that we are creating a problem, a time bomb, a time bomb waiting to think. Um, the former Emia, uh, Sanusi was, we are creating a time bomb. Did anybody think to go within those communities and see how their mindset will be changed? Rather than talk about study plenary and just say, ah, we will do something. Or the honorable people can... Did somebody yeah, bother to say, take a solution that is locally, that yeah. these people can easily accept, and let's find a way to make it their own. But the infantry hey, to but actually they post the you pictures. Several pictures. Well, well, you get chest, though. No, no, no. You get money. They, they don't feel they don't, they don't feel lost. They don't know what we're going through. Yeah, yeah, some people were saying yeah, this yesterday. Ah, the, the speaker has always posted everything he did online. We never had issues. So these pictures, he posted them. They are going at all at this time. Asu mm. has been on strike. If you say it is by constituency, there are students in Surulere that are sitting at home right now that are not in schools and their parents are looking at you. Yeah, you know, go, they used oh, to say we should leave the executive, we should go to our lawmakers in our constituencies yeah. that mm -hmm. the closest to us to them. pressure the executive. To pressure the, and if you are not even available, you are right now in your Harvard mm. doing leadership and government. Rubbing it in How our do face. they go to you? Mm. You let's go. Let's, 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 let's go on a break. The problems we have here are local. Let's well, let's, let's, do, we, we, let's you know? go on a break because. You know, there are so many layers to this As conversation. Yeah. So a man has a right to improve himself, no doubt about it. Mm -hmm. But does he well, have a let's right to run right right his we Well, coming back. <laughs> <to this. laughs> He'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. for staying with us we are still discussing the right honorable by Jabia Miller's tweet I mean I was talking about his right to improve himself because we want good leaders we want our leaders to be better yep. and the man said as you said it, he's trying to inspire young people that regardless of your age you should be able to go and seek knowledge now would it, would it have been better if he had taken a picture that didn't show he was from Harvard maybe he was just taking a picture where he was in a classroom by himself and just to have a background, nothing that shows Harvard. If you had seen that picture, would you still have this reaction? Or oh, what is paining Nigerians is that it's Harvard. That's what was paining. No, no, that's what was paining. Okay, no, no. We've so never that. seen Buari's doctors in the UK. Never seen? We've never seen these we doctors. We've never seen we've never seen team of doctors. doctors. Yeah. We only know that he goes there. Yeah. That's just that he's going. That plane carry him and go hospital day here. That's what is a problem. Mm. It's a problem because the state of where our own is. If our universities were okay, and you just choose to go there, That's nobody will compel thing. you. Mm -hmm. But the state at which it is, is now, there's a question of this right to. Very poor timing. We need to question this right. Our, our people usually play. I, I, I take your money. Is it your money? When your office mm -hmm. is one that can change situations in a place, mm -hmm. okay. it means it's conflicting with something. You're sitting in the office of the speaker. You're con it is conflicting with your right to go to any other place as an alternative to solving the problem that you're, you're, you're supposed to solve here. We should start to ask our lawmakers, they should review this right. Every single office holder, we've been saying it here, and people think it's just uh, pedestrian to say that if you are in a Nigerian um, leader, in any of the offices, our public offices, you should not take advantage of public universities, private universities abroad, hospitals abroad, all of that, because of that conflict. <laughs> You cannot have an alternative and solve the problem you're made to solve. Yeah. So that right now, we will question that right. Do you mm. have a right? You mm. don't. Mm. You chose so. Mm. We don't come call you for your house. Let nobody deceive us. They bought my form. They bought my form. Now lie. You won't go for office. You won't go. Mm. You're hungry you to become. Mm. That's what it to be speaker. Mm. You wanted to go. Mm. And once you go, mm. I have the, mm. the charisma right. and, and, and the, uh, you, a character that, that your office uh, or your, uh, you should uh, suit and say, mm. no, no, I won't do something that comes to my office. Come to visit because... 
he tweeted himself. Oh. Mm, Naim, na. Well, then, you know, sometimes you they teach them, you just take Naim, the Naim, use your hand and tie your wallet now. <laughs> Organizations <laughs> pay for their leaders to learn emotional intelligence. Very important. Our leaders need to learn emotional intelligence. Very, very important. And this right we're talking about, your right ends where another person's right starts. Stop. The fact that you decided to be a leader shows that you want to be held to a higher standard. If a private individual chooses to travel at this time that everybody's complaining there's no money, nobody will ask you where are you getting your money from. But you're not just a private citizen. You are a leader uh -huh. who is supposed to be focusing on the country, on the educational system to solve the problem. You cannot solve any problem if your attention is divided. And that's why we missed it. I've always said on this table, if you make a law to say that every leader will use our government hospitals, give us six months. The hospitals will change because the truth is these people do not want to die. Mm. COVID opened our eyes to that. Mm. They don't want to die. If you say that every leader must have their children attend uni... Once you choose to be a leader, your children will attend universities right. in this place. Give us six months. Mm. Universities will change because they want the best. Right. So that best that you want, you need to be... Like, that picture traumatized me mm. because I have young people who are in my DM every day looking for what to do. Some are depressed. Just Some want to... Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. Nigerians were traumatized by that picture. Because he did not apply emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence tells you when to do, when not to do. Mm. How when to, to do? show, when not to show. Mm -hmm. How to show and how not to show. Mm. If me can go on social media and show that I'm eating chicken, nobody can hold me. Mm. But if I decide to take a political position tomorrow, and with everybody that's clamoring, there's no food, there's no, no food, no, I now go and show chicken. Yeah. I now go and show okay. chicken. You are now I will be traumatizing right. Nigerians that cannot afford that chicken. Right. I mean, I think that's fantastic. Fabulous. Mm -hmm. Let me take this call from Yakub. Yakub, are you there? Yakub, good morning. Are you there? I'm there. Good morning. You're nice. Good morning you. Go ahead, please. Yeah. yeah, thank you very much. Uh, well, I totally agree with Obi and uh, Sister Niman. Uh, yes. Uh, the Honorable Speaker has played a big role in the past to so hold this uh, process that is ongoing now. Because uh, we all witnessed it. I watched it the day that he attended meeting with NSC and all that. Yes, but attending that Alfred University at this time, the time is so, so, so wrong. It's totally wrong. Yes, they have the right to do so, but this, the time is it, it's not good at all. See, uh, Mara, we are talking about Boko Haram now. Do you know a single law can change this? This phase that we are facing now. If, if, if our National Assembly can make a law, we are by who compel executive that keeps in telling us. This is a government I protest for, although I'm not regret. This is executive telling us that they know the financial of Boko Haram up, up to today. They never met mm -hmm. if our If our law, if our lawmaker can make a, made a law, we are by who compel them to tell us who is this financial because Boko Haram can never exist. If there is no financial of the, all these people, if mm. there are no people that bought them people and giving them food, giving them drugs. So, but this time that he attended this Harvard, I also have to say, it is not right. I mm. think right. uh, the you. Honorable Minister needs to apologize. Thank you. All right, but in fairness, I mean, many have said that following the Speaker's intervention, ASU has reviewed their strike action several times. So mm. this is a man that has taken the issue. Yes, he has they. taken the issue of ASU Why seriously. Why yes, mm. So... Um, I'm of yes. the opinion that, you know, um, we had, there are, there are things that are the right things to do. Mm -hmm. And then there's right the right time to do the right mm -hmm. things. And then there's the wrong time to do the right thing. So um, this is like all shades of, it, it does not wrong. Mm -hmm. But you, it, it just reflects our leadership. You know, there are some things that you do be like, ah, I cannot post this thing. No, this is not the right time. Even me as mm -hmm. a TV personality, when we have, I was in Dubai and I was posting my Dubai phone and then, I posted and I now saw after my post that there was an attack. The train attack um, happened in March, ending of March, mm -hmm. when I was in Dubai having fun. I deleted mm -hmm. my post. Chop, chop. Because I knew that this was not the time for me to be for celebrating it. being in Dubai and enjoying mm -hmm. myself. People, because are dying. people just got attacked yeah. on the train. Lives lost, all of that. So there was a timing. Um, our Vice President Oshiba Joe did something that we all applauded here on the show. And he seemed like, why are you celebrating him? He went to private city. That's because we are in a country where 
we need to start celebrating good leadership so we can show the ones that they are needing to learn okay. how Example. to learn. Okay. Our president has been a president that has health issues for long and never once did think Mistake. that he could have flown his okay. doctors here okay. just to exemplify, just okay. to show... Nigerians are not hard to please. At all. But now that thing that the VP did, and the, can so much way in him? Uh -oh. Can you just it's go so to the easy to win us? so much way? It's so easy to be Nigerians. So it's smallest this, things. This, um, our speaker had an opportunity. If, if, maybe, you know, because I'm, I am very sure that he did not apply for Kennedy School of Government just this year. Mm -hmm. He would have done these things since last year he before there was strike. Maybe it's just a course. You know? Maybe it's not a full... Yes, he could have applied for it since last year. He could have gotten an opportunity. He couldn't have deferred. He could have gone for this program and not that anybody has gone for a program. Okay. And we just out know. of... Are out of the fact that ah, this is not the right time when Show there this. is so much going on. Yeah. I am sensitive to the plight of my people. Yes. I will not put it in their faces. So keep your pictures. I feel they now resolve as to strike one. The children are back in school. When you are you graduating, know, you can yeah, tell us. Yeah. But you see, Mora, your day, our leaders have done it several times. You know that they will do graduation. We are on strike. You will see all the senators. They will fly to do children's graduation. This is they will now. take picture and post it online. They've done it several times. We talk about it. It is that. They don't, it, our leaders don't even think that we deserve their respect. Mm -hmm. We are paying your salaries, you They're know. Like, we are the reason you have that influence. You are using diplomatic funds. They're not queuing up for visa. Students. You are going anyhow. You should respect us mm -hmm. enough to say that mm -hmm. I will not do these things. We have to open our phone lines. Let's hear from our viewers. We're going to go on a break. When we come back, we'll open our lines. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So we're going to open our phone lines to uh, for our viewers concerning our topic. Just to wrap up on the topic, um, you can call us on the numbers on your screen: zero eight one two seven zero five three six eight seven zero nine one three nine zero seven six nine four. You can also tweet us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag your VTVC. Let me let you wrap up on this. Finally, your thoughts on this? So my, I personally believe that the speaker can defer this course. I don't agree with whether he cannot. I think it should defer at this time. I think it was most insensitive yesterday when the NLC and other um, bodies had joined the ASU on this um, pro ASU strike uh, protest, and he tweeted yesterday. He was he totally. Wasn't away. Uh, which is very. Really, uh, it's it's possible that he was not. You don't travel now. Worse. Worse. That protest had been over uh, over uh, pre notified. Everybody had judicial notice of it. <laughs> and now he. Okay. No. I think. He, he should redeem his um, image. We think we know he's a sensitive leader. We know he's a people, people person. Take, and be like um, Ashwaju. Okay. Imagine the cost that was put into the colloquium last year, and the colloquium was just cancelled, just like that. And we know what it takes to plan events. The entire event was cancelled because of the attack that happened in um, Zafar, the farmer's mm. killing. That's how sensitive every leader should be. No matter the cost of this, please defer. At this time, we don't Let me take Oluremi. Oluremi, good morning. Are you there? Yes, I'm still You're here. live. Go ahead, please. Oh, okay. Good morning. Morning. Uh, my contribution is that Sami Bajami Ali, uh, uh, Ali uh, is somebody mm -hmm. I respect so much. I think he has the right because the house right now on holiday, they're on reset. So he's just utilizing the spirit to educate himself oh. about governance. So, and the reason why he is showing me, I believe, you know, Nigeria, they don't believe in anything. They believe in people forging certificates and all the rest. He's showing it like these people will now see his fight. He actually participated in that call. I think that is it. Fantastic. So he be Thank you, Lumen. So he's on holidays and she's using the holidays to gain knowledge. Amen. I think that, that's, that, that's, a, that's a valid point. She should not it's show us. Possible. Because of what we are going through. Yes. Okay. Okay. The valid. children that he's, the, the students that he's ruling over or leading over are at home for mm -hmm. how many months? This is not the mm -hmm. time to tell us you, you like personal development. We don't mm -hmm. need it. Hide <laughs> it and solve problems with the one you have gotten so Thank far. Thank you. you can I have messages here. Yes. So um, Ngume Fiona mm -hmm. says he could have shown us the pictures even after graduation, mm -hmm. but not now, Jerry. Uh, Simon Rose says it's only in Nigeria such nonsense they happen. All their children, they graduate daily. 
and then get mine to post them for social media with their full chest. Mm -hmm. And I went ahead to insult them. I'm not going to say that. <laughs> Andrew Zutam <laughs> says, a height of insensitivity. This was why J.J. Rollins of Ghana said revolution would happen in Nigeria. Why? They are in love with their oppressors. Hey. Um, mm. Akim Murele says, did Obasanjo attend school of government? Are leaders with misplaced priorities. We need local intelligence to rule this nation. Yes, and because of that, let me mention, um, I have I've listened to the current chair of um, NI, um, NIPSS, Nigerian Institute of Public Strategic Studies, Kuru. This is, they, they don't just take everybody. Yes. Because the process, it is intense. It is for top, top people who want top to leaders. upgrade themselves mm -hmm. in leadership, in strategy, mm -hmm. in governance. Now, if he was going to Kuru or he feels like Kuru will not give, might not be up to what he wants, the, 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 the thing I would expect is for us to now see how we can empower Kuru more with the facility to give if he what he will need. To what he wants. Now, you know, and standard. when you experience, when we don't experience, you know we complain about hospitals, mm -hmm. that our leaders don't experience what the average Nigerian mm -hmm. experiences in general hospital because our leaders never go to general hospital. Whenever a politician passes through a bad road, check it out. In a few days, they patch that road. Yes. Because they experience it. Mm -hmm. That's why you must wear the shoes. Mm -hmm. When you experience when you, what you don't, you cannot have empathy or any form of emotional intelligence towards something you have never experienced, experienced before. Mm. So it's important that we, that's why we are complaining. We do not dislike, because some people will now go on Twitter now. Mm -hmm. The goons of uh, Honorable Gajabi Amila, the, ones, the psycho fans that support and are eating from him, mm -hmm. will not start telling, telling him that the ladies are, they don't like you, don't mind them, they are complaining, Nigerian youths. Please, the Honorable should be wise enough to understand um, positive criticism. Mm. Good feedback and take it from a place of we want to help you be better. Constructive. Right. We, we have to wrap up. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Okay, William Olajuwoke says there's nothing wrong in personal development as we all agree. Imagine if his children were sitting at home because of ASU. He won't even apply talk less of sending pictures. A call to service is a call to humanity. Mm. It shows that we mean that what we mean to our leaders. Emmanuel says, while Mr. Speaker did not break any law, it is impudent, insensitive, and immoral that he is posting his educational strides abroad while lecturers strike and has grounded universities for over for almost all of 2022. Mm. But he understands that aside social media and analysts, nothing will happen. Nothing nothing happen. That's all we can take on this segment. But I think in, to wrap this up, um, we've all agreed here that it's not that wrong in personal development. He is entitled to maybe you take we we'll 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 borrow a comment from what Mary BC said earlier that. Our leaders must have emotional intelligence. You know when to post, when not to post, what to do, when not to do. Have an understand the mood of the society that you're leading. Understand that, okay, this is bad timing. It's good to post, keep your pictures, and we can use that also for those of you who are going for graduation ceremonies. This is the season, May, June, July. They're all graduating here. Post your pic, keep your pictures within your family mm -hmm. for now, just because you're a leader. Not because you don't, you don't have the right to show it, but because of what we're going through, hopefully, that's the cause of the strike. The students are back in school. Hey, you can now start celebrate posting and celebrating. We'll celebrate with you. That's all we can take on this segment. When we come back, we're bringing our guest, Akifade. You stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. Join us on this segment is Mr. Akinfadei, the founder of Akinfadei Foundation, AFF. It's a communication organization that leverages technology towards the goal of social accountability in Nigeria. He'll be speaking on the plight of women, empowerment of women, good governance, and women inclusion ahead of the 2023 general elections. Welcome to the show, sir. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Good morning. Good morning. Good to have you on. So tell us, um, I know we've been discussing this issue of women inclusion, empowerment for many years. Um, recently, when the, the gender-based um, law was thrown out by the National Assembly, there were lots of uproar um, uh, in, the, in the country concerning this. In your view, have we done enough to empower women and to include them in good governance? Thank you very much. Very good question. Uh, I do think that uh, we can never do enough, but we've uh, made a modest contribution to this space. Let me start by saying that uh, our problems are more complex than doing enough 
or not doing enough. And it starts with uh, the patriarchal hegemony under which we're enslaved as a people. Just take your mind for a moment to when babies are born by parents in our part of the world. You find out that oftentimes men have said, Kilo B, mm. I'll translate that to what did, what, what, is she, what did your wife give birth to? Oh, I have a baby girl. And you found men hissing, literally. But when they say, oh, I got a baby boy, you find our father saying, oh, I call you, you don't be. Let me translate that to only the valiant give birth to males. Now, you find others saying, oh, it's a baby girl, uh, aware or Aware of means it's a softer approach. Mm. If you break down the synonyms of that, it means it's a weaker approach. It's a larger approach. Mm. So oftentimes, male kids have been applauded more than females. And it means we've conflated the importance of having a child without this perception mm. of male gender supremacy. And that defined why girls have been molded to have that soft, domesticated impression of themselves, why men are described as aggressive, bold, and assertive. And this is what they take into, into adulthood. This is what they take. This is what they mainstream as a more non-culture that enters the government space. Mm. And then you now find out that today, to the shame and embarrassment right. of the world, yeah. we've had, since 1999, we've had House of Reps. When you, when you, when you count 360 House of Reps members, yeah. you yeah. barely count six women. Right. When you count 109 senators, you barely count three women. In this country, we've produced women leaders in businesses. I mean, within the corporate sector. We produce right. women leaders in medicine. We mm -hmm. produce women leaders across professional boards. Right. But once it comes to governance, right. where are women? We don't find them. Exactly. So right. what we've done, so to your question, have we done enough? Right from when the Corruption Not In My Country project began, which, which has been the driving force behind us, which we've scaled up, and involved into this project, for which I digress to say a big thank you to TVC and Morai of seated on this call for all the support you guys gave us when Indeed. we launched Corruption Not in My Country in 2016. I think you guys should give yourself a round of applause. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, sir. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. I mean, because you stood behind us. It was noble then. It was very new, but right. you stood behind us. And when we were, when we got onto this project, we, we landed a lot of insights. Who are those? Well, quickly, we are quick to point accusing fingers at government. Okay, let me get Nigeria. a few more questions in for you. Let me get a few more questions in for you. Sure, yeah. um, sure. I, I want to, I, I, I hear your premise, you know, you established this, this history that we have, sad as it, as it used yeah. to be. I believe that we're, we're moving away from that a bit. And maybe because of the prevalence of the age difference, this generation that experienced this, this are the ones that are meant to be leading right now and they are not stepping up. My, my question is, how do we begin to change and um, change the mindsets of women who are already at the age of leadership to get into it, to get more involved in government as opposed to just the usual hustle of entrepreneurship and the corporate world? I, I want to disagree with you, if you allow me. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm always very, very shy to assume that, oh, women have been hustling around entrepreneurship. Oh, they don't want to get into governance. I, it will strike me like we're sparing the offenders, but we're blaming the victim. Mm. Have you thought for a moment, how can women actually cope within our political space as currently configured. 
violence always perforates our political space. I monitored Oshun election. And I saw results that were rejected because gunmen went to a polling booth to shoot someone, to shoot a copper. I saw a lot of vote buying. So think about violence, one. Two, I insist that we've orchestrated a deliberate gender bias. Number three, I insist that we've designed our political space to be so extortionate that you yeah. begin to ask yourself, how can women even afford this? Mm. You ask a woman who labors to take care of her children to bring 100 million to the table just so she can aspire to lead our nation, how does that work? And how do you expect women to hit this ceiling, to shatter this glass, when even our legislative assembly have constituted, constituted themselves into the, 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 the clog in the wheel of progression to political leadership, March 8, 2022, as of ref throughout the bill that was put in place to ensure gender, equal, gender equity in power distribution. It's not even gender equity. It was 35% affirmation um, action, right? As of ref threw it out. And so we say, oh, women, stop puzzling after entrepreneurship. Stop puzzling after X, Y, Z. Come into the space. Come and, come and struggle for power. What can they do? When even the laws, the lawmakers in this land right. are making it difficult, are choking the space. Yeah. Go ahead, BC. Yes, so um, I'm happy that a man is the one speaking up for women. Yeah. And it's refreshing because what we see most of the time is that women are the ones trying to fight their fight. Mm. And they usually hit a roadblock because the mindset of the men is that uh, they are more important. It's a long history, which you have already established in the beginning. How do you think, in order for women to rise, how do we begin and, or how do men begin to accept that, first of all, they are equal with women? I think we have to start from there. In the very first approach, let me start it from how do men begin to think, right? Let's break it, break it down. Let's be very, very simple about this. Men should remember for starters that to determine the gender of a child, you can only do so by ultrasound scan and you will not get the real gender of the fetus until after 18 or 21 weeks. When you've now done this, you will now discover, oh, I'm expecting a baby boy. In the olden days, I'm sure, in the days of our fathers or our forefathers, I'm not even sure they had ultrasound scan. They just wait, right? Now, the fetus that gives you a boy happened because you as the man released Y chromosomes and it mixes with the X chromosomes of your wife or your partner. This means if you did not release Y chromosomes, you are coming with a baby girl. So how come you start harassing your wife for giving you, you giving you a baby girl? Mm. Mm. Men, men should first understand the science or the biological science behind the art of procreation. And therefore, the men, because it's not all men, some men are strong advocates of gender equality. Yeah. But the men who delude in the arrogance of, oh, I gave back to a baby boy, should stop it. Okay. They, don't define, they don't determine right. that. Number two, number two, we should begin to understand now that fairness, equality, and justice are the foundations of human rights. Yeah. And women deserve a right. Number three, we should accept in humility that gender inclusion in decision-making or in the framing of politics over time 
has ensured safer and healthier communities. Let's take our mind back to when the COVID pandemic ravaged the world. Quickly remember the nations that were leading in close to zero mortality during COVID. One of those nations was New Zealand. Who is the leader of New Zealand? Jacinda Ardern, a 42-year-old lady. And think for a moment, New Zealand has 5.1, 5,122,000 citizen population. But it's a $45 billion economy. In New Zealand dollars, it's 62 billion. Right. Now, look at Lithuania. It's a woman that's their prime minister. Their economy is 55 billion GDP. That's a nation of two, two million, two point something million people. What happened to the nation where men have ruled? And I'm not saying lead. The United States was led by Donald Trump. It grossed 1 million deaths. UK, led by Boris Johnson, they were dying in droves. So we need to understand right. that women come with this emotional intelligence to lead Natural and the capacity. Yeah. Of Naturally, mm. women can multitask. Mm. Women, let's get, let's make it softer. Men sit at home once in a while. When I want to, when I want to relax, I watch Nigerian home video. There are times I pick scents for me, mm. and I will see Nigerian men say, "Woman, where is my food?" Okay, oh. so I don't know which video to watch, but let me, let me put you on hold for a second because so, we have very little time. I want to ask yes. a few more questions from you. Go ahead. So let's sure. quickly talk about what your foundation is doing yeah. to, you know, to promote women inclusiveness in governance. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, let me use this opportunity to say that our foundation would not have been able to do anything if we didn't enjoy the privilege of capacity strengthening from MacArthur Foundation. And they've done a whole lot in this country and they've strengthened our capacity to shape narratives for the reduction of socialization by parents, girls and boys, by parents who try to frame boys and girls into traditional gender roles. They strengthened our capacity to confront gender stereotyping by the news media. And we keep working to increase public consciousness for the consequence of rape and sexual assault. In the whole world, WHO statistics says that one in three women are raped around the world. When you look at the population of the world, that's 736 million people, women. And do they get justice? No. So what we've done, we designed Flag It app. And with that Flag It app, all you need to do is to just download it. Go on Google Play Store or um, iOS, download Flag It app, domestic violence, rape issue, whatever it is, just report. As we are seeing your report, authorities that we've partnered with are seeing it in real time. I'll tell you what, 2020, while the old world was on lockdown, some students of Afeb Abalola University, men constituted themselves into a WhatsApp group. And all they do, they design an approach to get girls to befriend them. They secure the trust of the girls, and then they exchange nude, explicit pictures. Mm. And a few weeks later, they tell the girls, 200,000 or your pictures end up on Instagram. One of the bold girls who was close to suicide reported on our Flag It app. And immediately, we tried to break their wall. We couldn't. So, I quickly reached out to uh, the, the, the governor of, uh, the, the, the wife of the governor of Ikiti State, Her Excellency Mrs. Fahemi, to say, this is happening at the Afeba Balala right. University. Right on that your watch, madam. How can we help? And she made calls. The commissioner of police, everybody, we worked with interagencies. Right. And October 25th, 2020, we got the boys arrested, led by their kingpin. Right. And they are facing prosecution. 
So we've been working to defend women's rights. We've been working to raise the voice of women. Mm -hmm. Our employment at the Akifade right. Foundation, Makato insists must be gender balanced. It's 50-50. Right. Right. And it's because of timing, sir, I have to, um, yeah. I want you to mention the, the video, because I know that uh, Mariam has been telling us, reminding us, to do a video where a woman puts up, puts up a um, video that she, how, what she's going to do if she becomes president. Could you tell us about that before we wrap up? Great. It's a competition we created as a fallout of the, uh, of the political primaries. Um, APC, PDP, all put, I mean, their primaries have been male dominated. President, the presidency for men. Even Peter Obi, who we say is progressive, sent a man's name as placeholder to INEC. So again, women are excluded. So we created what women can do competition. And all you need to do is this. In two minutes, make a pitch of yourself. If I am Nigeria's president, X, Y, Z is what I will do. You could talk about agricultural development, education, health care, whatever makes you comfortable. After you've done that, post it on your social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, tag all your friends, let them like it. Yes. The greatest number of likes, you're shortlisted to the next round. The next round, 10 people will be shortlisted. We'll now give you a topic on corruption because government administration in Nigeria and around the world have been predatory. It's been corrupt. So we say, speak about corruption. We're, we're going to pick the best five. Right. And these best five are going to win cumulative of gifts in the neighborhood of 3 million Naira. Wow. We're just trying to en encourage. Yeah, we're just trying to encourage and galvanize the voice action of women, women participation Fantastic. politics. We've we talked to... and talked and talked. Yeah. Now we need to mobilize. Oh. Let me add, please. Let me add, please. Nigerian women should also fight for themselves. Yes. In this case, yeah. let's stop, let's stop stereotyping even ourselves. Yes. Now, I'm not endorsing any candidate on this call, but Funke Akindele declared to be deputy governor of Lagos State recently. And I went on social media. The comments were disgraceful. Oh, she just lost a marriage. How can she lead Lagos? What the heck? 2011-2012, Funke Akindele and I had projects that I engaged her to carry out. All right. And most women have not seen a more resilient, tenacious, hardworking lady. Okay. Why can't we have to wrap drive our leadership? Right. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Thank Mr. You. Thank you. Um, we, we have to wrap up on that because we run out of time. But thank you very much for sharing with us about the AFF. That's all we can take on the show today. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.